clock says 7 p.m., so it's Monday, March 14th, 2022. This is the Town of Brookfield Planning Board. I call the meeting to order. Uh, we'll go through our roll call. I'm Tim Straz. Terry Ward? Here. John Mayer? Here. Gus Stratton? Carrie McElhaney? Yeah, I said that wrong, didn't I? I'm sorry. It's okay. It'll take me. Uh, we'll practice. I need the help. <laughs> I need, I'll need the help. Trust me. <laughs> My meter uh, vocabulary is challenged at times. Mr. Stratt. That's wrong. Well, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> President. Uh, we do not have alternates to a point. Uh, I would like to welcome Carrie as our newly elected member. Thank you. And Terry, thank you for continuing for another three years. Appreciate you, all your help. Thanks for having me. Uh, we are, before we can really begin our meeting, we need to elect our officers for 2022, which is after uh, town election, we have to reform our leadership. So uh, we need to start off with the chair. Mr. Chairman, I move that we um, nominate Tim Strauss to remain as chair. I'll second that. I uh, accept. Any other nominations? Are there any other no nominations? <laughs> Go along with that. I'll be more accept. <laughs> I'm guessing not, right? No. All right. I accept. It. Well, do we agree? What's that? Do we have to vote on it? Yes. 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 <laughs> All those in favor of uh, having Mr. Straz as the uh, chair for another year, please say aye. 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 Opposed? We are at, uh, we need a vice chair. I nominate John for vice chair. I'd like to nominate Terry as vice chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn it down. Yeah, uh, do we want to second both of their nominations? Uh, I, I second both nominations. Okay. <clears throat> so the, the, um, the board should vote. We have two nominees for vice chair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've done this before, haven't we? Oh, we have. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I haven't, have, haven't missed the meeting since. How do we want to vote? Do we up and down? Show of hands. Who was the first nomination? John. I was. Yeah. <clears throat> Hold on. I, I get a. Uh, so Terry nominated John. Sorry. This will make for fun minutes. <laughs> okay. Maybe we go around the table and just uh, state what we want for a vice chair. It's a new situation. Yes. Or John could just yeah. happily accept it. Yes, John. Joyful. I'll accept it. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Gary, thank you for your Sorry. diplomacy here. <laughs> I'm a mother. That's what happens. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate it. Uh, all those in favor of John as vice chair, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Comments. Are there any, a lot of public here tonight. There certainly are comments coming on another subject matter, but do we have any unrelated to the public hearing? Yes, Mr. Frazier. Yes, um, the town passed Warrant Article 3 uh, at town meeting. I think it causes problematic uh, uh, issues for the, the uh, uh, our zoning ordinance. Uh, 
because it just says now that all you need is 250 feet of frontage on a private road. Not an approved private road, just a private road. That was the wording that was passed at town meeting. And there is no definition in our current zoning of private road, so it can be whatever most anybody wants to call a cow path, it's a private road. And there was really no guidance in the state RSAs other than to say it mentions private road very fleetingly and said towns need to pass their own ordinances. So I'm going to, to encourage the planning board to relook at what got passed, relook at your definitions, and think about putting some more work in there on that. Because I think it, it literally, in, in my case, on Upper Lyford Road, I have eight acres. I have a tractor path that, that goes across my property. Um, because if my property is not wet, uh, I think that I could easily do a subdivision and call that tractor path a, a, a uh, not that I'm going to do it, but I, I'm just using myself as an example. Because I've got eight acres, I could at least get, and my current home sits in one corner, so it's already got its 250 feet of frontage on Lyford Road. I think I could, I could run that private road up and get at least two more lots in the back if I so desired. And I, I don't want to do that, but that's just one example. So I, I think it's something that the planning, I suggest the planning board take a look at going forward. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Any other public comments? So just along those lines, how fast can the planning board enact uh, changes to that, like to the wording of that, to protect the town? Because we would have to wait for the next uh, election cycle. So what happens if someone applies this year? Well, it will come through the submission process, like we are tonight for this uh, subdivision. I, I, when I saw that Article 3, it, uh, it, it went by me too. I think it was a typo. There was, was never any discussion of removing approved private road from private road. Right, we'll have to go back and look. Okay. Yeah. I'm taking comments here, so not dialogue. I just want to know if that pertains to Article 2 2 that was passed for an article, the Cedar Park. Because I know there's an issue with a uh, setback from the river. I don't know whether it's 75 feet. I think that the public comment they said 75 feet is the ordinance for the town. But I think the state requires 50 feet, but um, I think we passed at the town meeting that it was 15 feet. And I just got want to make sure that's clarified or that it's or what we can do to prevent that from if that's the case. Thank you for your comment. Diane. Diane Smith. Um, uh, I had communicated with you, Tim, that I wanted to have some comments. I was going to reserve them until um, another time. Um, but since Frank brought up this issue, I just wanted to um, add my concern. I voted for, for, the, for the article. Um, or, excuse me, I did not, actually. Because the word approved when I was on the planning board, had not come off of, the, of that particular section uh, of the zoning ordinance. It disappeared last year. And in the wording in last year's warrant, it said nothing about removing that, that terminology. And I think that if people had known that it was going to be removed, the word approved disappeared. It's still in the definitions. So I would suggest that some additional thought be given to that. And um, it is possible, by the way, to change zoning ordinances before next March. You simply have to call a special town meeting. Any other public comments? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to review and possible approval of our, of our minutes from February 14th, 2022. Did everybody have an opportunity to review the minutes? Yes. Is there a motion to accept the minutes at all? I'll make that motion. Second. 
any discussion on the minutes? Nope. All right. Seeing none, all those in favor of accepting the minutes from February 14, 2022, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Thank you. All right, the next item is our public hearing on the Simone subdivision application at Wentworth and Lyford Roads, tax map 18, lot 20. It is 7.09. I'm calling to this uh, hearing to order. Those who wish to speak, I do ask that you please sign in uh, your name. <coughs> to print your name so that we can maintain it for the records, please. An address. It's right here. Uh, procedurally, I ask that uh, uh, there's no cross-talking, that uh, everybody uh, addresses the board directly, um, and uh, please act civilly as we discuss. Um, We'll get Mr. Berlin an opportunity to present for us. Do I need to sign in on that, Mr. Chairman? I've got you. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Good evening, members of the board and public. Excuse me, could you turn that just a little bit? Sure. If that's possible. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Everyone like that? My name is Brian Berlin. I'm a licensed land surveyor. I'm uh, owner of a company called Land Tech. Excuse me, Land Tech. It has an office in Osby and had an office here in Wakefield for many, many years prior to that. Uh, Zach and Christine Simone had hired me to look at subdivision potentials and other development potentials of their lot on Lyford Road and Governor's Road, or is it Wentworth Road? Excuse me. Wentworth. It's Wentworth Road. Yeah. Yes, I get too confused. And we did so and thought that perhaps the highest and best use for the property, if it was to be developed, is developed into a three lot subdivision. And for purposes of orientation, this is Lightford Road up here and Wentworth Road down here. Just no. 4109. 4109. Yeah, 4109. Gate Road. I think they're. Gate Roads. Both of them are state roads. Yes, correct. Not your percent. But Lightford Road is a town road. We'll get your chance later. No, it's not. Life of the state road. Yes, yes. Really? Let's, 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 can we I please just hold, uh, hold comments and let Mr. Berlin start the presentation and you can, you can make comments when okay. the time is appropriate. Thank you. So it's tax map 18, lot 20, and it contains 79 acres. The land is in the RA1 zone, like most of Brookfield is, which has a minimum lot size of 2 acres and a minimum road frontage of 250 feet. Per the NRCS web soil site, which is the soil survey produced by the federal government and is just getting better and better by the year, the land is Paxton, which is a pretty similar side slope soil in New England. Wetlands do exist on the property. There's a very large wetland here that fronts almost all of Lyford Road. And these wetlands were uh, mapped by a certified wetland scientist, Tom Varney of Varney Engineering. Having looked at the topography, the frontage, and the wetlands, it was my opinion that the best that they could do is develop the property into three lots. The first lot is shown here in blue. It is a five and a half acre lot and it has <clears throat> ample frontage on Lyford Road. This lot will also access Lyford Road for its driveway. This section of Lyford Road is useless due to its wetlands. Um, I don't believe the state or the town would be favorable about getting a wetland crossing there. So we opted to use the existing frontage up here on Wentworth Road. 
last year, the um, Simones applied to the state of New Hampshire to get a two to three lot access point here, and that was granted. So in the end, lot 20-1, which is the pink lot, will contain 30, almost 37 acres, have its frontage on Wentworth Road, its frontage on Lyford Road, let me rephrase that, its access on Wentworth Road, its frontage on Lyford Road. And lot 20-2 will contain almost 37 acres, also have access off of Wentworth Road and its legal frontage on Lyford Road. 20-1 will have 957 feet of frontage on Lyford Road. And lot 20-2 will have 670 feet on Lyford Road. So all three lots have legal road frontage, and all three lots have state-approved um, driveway access down there. But now that I just learned the blue lot would need state approval, we don't yet have that, but I don't think that will be a problem with DOT. Yeah. <coughs> so that is pretty much my presentation. Very good, thank you. Excuse me, can I ask something? Just wait. Okay, no, wait. I already showed you. Okay, every no, hold, on. hold on, hold wait. on. Wait. Yes, you'll get your opportunity. Yeah. We're just about there. <laughs> we're, we're now with public comment. Sorry, I yes. just, one more yes, thing. Sir. I did request a waiver. Yes. And it's probably now is the time to just address that. In the subdivision regulations, as a waiver, the map will not be drawn at a scale larger than 1 inch equals 100 feet. This map is drawn at 1 inch equals 120 feet. And a funny thing about scale, if you um, have to scale it up 20%, which is what we'd have to do to meet that regulation, it increases 20% vertically and horizontally. It would take two to three sheets to show this property on pages um, at that regulated scale. So for ease of simplicity, user friendliness, just get it on a single sheet, is the reason we request the one inch equals 120. And I know the Registry of Deeds will not have a problem with it. Understood. Uh, just two comments before we go to the, to the public comment. Uh, when we met last month to accept the application, we brought up two questions. One was the uh, receiving a new drawing with the proper, with a legible stamp on it, was one of the items, mm -hmm. which I'm sure we'll submit should we get to that point. Um, and the second being the uh, witnessing uh, by a town official of the soil test, and I did receive that from the building inspector, and I have that in the, the master application here. Yes. So. so I did submit way back in December a final mylar that does yes. have legible seals. Yes. But I can get you yep. hard copy if I need to. Thank you. Uh, public comment now. Who would like to start? <laughs> Mr. Zacker. Right. Uh, I have three points. I hope the board considers this a major subdivision because of all the remaining frontage on Lightford Road. And when you check the zoning and the subdivision regs, you'll see that if you can further subdivide without creating new roads, it's considered a major. So yep. I encourage the board to consider this a major subdivision. Second comment is we try to maintain 250 feet of frontage on our roads. And I believe the proposed subdivision down on Wentworth Road results in segments much less than 250 feet. So I'd encourage the board to reject that part of the proposal. And my third comment is with respect to that five-acre lot. There's two proposed areas for development. The one in the front, I'm not sure, considering our requirements for dwelling size, it would fit in that first segment. It might have to go in the back segment, in which case you have to go across wetlands, in which case you need a wetlands permit. Uh, that's my comment. Mm 
apologize. I have to take the, the notes here tonight. Uh, next. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a... Name and address, please. I'll, I'll write this in for you. All right. 75 Lyford Road, Brookfield, New Hampshire. My name is Susan Maki. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I have a couple of, um, you know, department letters right from the commissioner of the D DOT, right, saying that both of those things that he's required an entrance of is called state roads, okay, state 109, state 109A. All right, this is the, would you like a copy of this? This is the, what you have to do to, uh, right from Commissioner Scott's office, and I'll give it to Mr. Shula, because I didn't have time to copy everything. And then we have, um, you know, especially, the, this goes further on down the line. This um, has everything to do with how he's going to try to get rid of all this water, right, without <laughs> dumping it on others, and that's synopsis, all right? But this is a blow by blow description of what has to happen. I also have maps and, all, and everything you would ever want to know about how to establish a legal um, pathway through our wetlands and our, on, our, on state roads. I mean, that's the way it is. And I called. You cannot change anything, sir. I don't care what we have to say. Too bad. That's it. So, you know, that's one of them. And there's the other. Um, I'll give it to you because it's so important. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Next. Hmm. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. I don't know uh, about the um, planning board's uh, rules of procedure, but the ZBA's rules of procedure, which were copied from the planning board's rules of procedure, said that abutters uh, usually are given the courtesy of, of talking first in the subdivision application. So I want to make sure that the abutters here tonight I, get a chance to talk. Absolutely. I apologize for not stating that. Mr. King. Just wait. Could you please Yes. Joey and Delbert, 336 Wentworth Road. I'm just wondering, is the intent to build houses there or intent to just sell the property? I mean, do you know what the intent is? I can tell you that's my property. And okay. it would be mine, please, yeah. my yeah. husband. <laughs> and I would be on the other side. And the other lot so you can build houses. Yes. Yeah. More than I'm sorry, I didn't hear the answer. <laughs> the two big lots. Uh -huh. Um, I plan on living on the one on the right with my husband and my daughter and her husband on the one on the left. Uh, and the so smaller neighbors. lot would be yeah. just we just wanna have a lot there just in case. So we share eighteen hundred feet of front of her property line with you. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking forward to working very much. <clears throat> Any other abutters who would like to? Yes. Uh, Cheryl Perry. I'm one of the abutters. Has the lot been protested? Address, Cheryl, please. I'm, I'm writing this down. What? The address, please. I'm writing oh, this down. 274 Wentworth Road. Thank you. Has it been perk tested? Yes. Um, <clears throat> Blue Lot had a perk test here. Mm -hmm. And the pink one here and the orange one there. And those, um, all those perk tests did pass. Any other butters that would like? Yes, sir. I have a question. I just moved in on my 314 where the uh, entrance is. How many houses are name, we... Name, name Joe's well, 314 went with through it. Uh, how many houses are we looking at and how far back are they said? Uh, are they going to be more houses being developed? Do we have any of those answers? Because obviously none of us want 30 houses going in behind our houses. Uh, we moved up here to be away from that. Uh, is, is that something that's one happening? On, or? One on each one. Yeah. That's it. And where at? Uh, probably kind of further in because there's a lot of... Yeah. So out of view of everyone else? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Go where the square art is on the yeah. left and then <clears throat> adjacent. Okay. This helps on the on the pink lot, the house would be way back here. And the orange lot probably back here somewhere. That's near my deer scene, that don't work. <laughs> <laughs> you get an easement. Be careful with my grandchildren. <laughs> no, my deer stand is back there. Any any other abutters? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Any other comments from abutters? Before we open it up? Yes. Yeah. I, I have a couple of questions. My name is Charles Dalbert. Yes, Charles. 336 Wentworth Road. Thank you. The regulation that we passed on the building lots, and Rich mentioned the 250 feet of frontage, uh, it seems to me that it implies that your driveway would be where you have that frontage. Most lots don't have two sides to them where they access roads, but I think the intent of that was that your driveway would occur within that amount of legal frontage for your lot. And I think the 60-foot strip, if there's any further subdivision down the way, a 10-acre lot, there would be no legal access for those two lots on the Wentworth Road side. It would be left. Even the wood lots are regulated to the point that on a Class 6 road, they need 250 feet of frontage. I think it's important to keep the intent of the regulation in mind. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other abutters who would like to comment? <coughs> have, all the, have all the wetlands on the lots been mapped? <coughs> or just the wetlands that were previously mapped? Who are you? David Camdaro, 286 Wentworth Road. What was that? 286 Wentworth Road. Thank you, David. The wetlands were mapped by wetland scientist Tom Varney. On the entire lot or just those that particular area? Because I know in back of my house, <clears throat> there's a river that runs through there. And I don't see that on any of the maps. Right. How long ago was that mapped? That was 18 months ago or so? Yeah, you know, about two years ago, 18 yeah. months, yeah. It's very wet out there. There's a lot of wetlands. We're not denying it. But that doesn't mean there's not a lot of dry land. It just affects some We're going to cover that. Okay. Any other butters? Yes, sir. Or as Gary, uh, 274 Wentworth Road. My question is about the 5 8 lot. Uh, I'm in a butter uh, that literally sits where you've suggested putting that house so close to the. Right? Right there. Mm -hmm. Is that the only location that you can come up with on that lot for a buildable location? Where it's literally going to be joined, at, our decks are going to be joined. We'll be shaking hands at breakfast. <laughs> uh, well, um, what is there any? Uh, I haven't looked at the. Can I show him that up close? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What kind of offsets is supposed to be? Usually yeah. 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 The orange line is your offset. That's the, uh, the yeah. orange line. There is the intended septic area that they can try for another. Mm -hmm. And that would be right there. Yeah. Yes. Right there. Right there? No, no right, right here. here. Oh, that okay, see, I will be taking No, as Mr. Goddard stated, we have to cross a wetland to get to the oh, yeah. Any other butter questions before we move on to the rest of the group? I guess Peter Donnelly, Bryce Drive, 12 Bryce, 12? 12 Bryce Drive. Thank you, Peter. Um, one of the questions I have, from what I understand, those are all going to be driveways going in, they're not going to be roadways. Or what is the attention down the road is that to be subdivided afterwards too. Those are pretty big parcels of land to have one person living on, yeah. or one family living on this property. <coughs> are they going to? Are they intending to divide that later on? No. And then using that driveway as a road? No. no. Okay. Chickens. Yeah. Because I think we Garden. have a, a 
the thing with driveway, I mean roadways, they have to be brought up to town specs. So if these are just going to be driveways to get in there, I don't have a problem with it. But if they're going to end up being roadways, then they have to be brought up to town specs. Right. Which all your developments or subdiv subdividable land developments are that way in town. So uh, that is my question. So. If I may, this plan proposes two driveways, a common drive servicing the pink and the orange as approved by the state, and a single driveway here, which is not yet approved. Any other public comment? I've got several, so I was going to go last. Anybody else want to talk first? Because I've got, I got maps. My only concern was that the the mapping of the wetland. I heard a lot of comments about other wetlands on the lot. How do we attest that this is completely mapped all the wetlands? I mean, I heard about a stream running down there. I don't see it on your map. Right. Where, 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 where's the document? Right. So, it's, there are wetland flags on the ground, and uh, Mr. Barney provided us with a report and a sketch. It has not the brook. He, the brook is not mentioned in his. Should it be? Is that considered wetland? So, I would, I would suggest the board ask for some sort of certification that this wetland mapping is indeed accurate. I don't know who this Mr. Varney is, but I think, you know, it better be accurate. Yes, yes. Mr. Kildare, I think it should be taken into consideration the time of year that that mapping was done, too, because if it's done in November, that's the drier month of the year, whereas if it's done now, it's going to have a totally different picture. It took him almost nine months to do it. Him and his daughter were out there a couple times a week, and it took him about nine months. Mr. Fraser, are you you're you're rear to Frank go? Frazier, 103 Lyford Road. And in full disclosure, I'm a former chairman of the Brookfield Planning Board. I'm a former chairman of the Brookfield ZBA, and I've been through this before multiple times. So you're doing a great job, Tim. So thanks for for the for the benefit for the benefit of the board, and I know we have some new members on the board who are also new to Brookfield. I'm not picking on you, Carrie, but I am picking on you. Is there's a variety of resources you guys have available. This is the 1990 master plan, and if you look at the where the proposed lot's going, it shows great swaths of wetlands going through that the parcel. So that parcel already has been uh, has been known and for a long time to be wet. As is the end of Mr. Compton's property, which is north of it, which is the old end of Chicarotti's property, now Mr. Compton's property. That lower end of that is all wet. It feeds into this. But of more importance, the, the part of what the planning board needs to also uh, take into consideration is the broader public uh, safety. And it doesn't mean that this is not a developable lot. It just means you've got to be cautious and careful how you do it. Um, so, the, uh, as for those that people don't know, but this blue circle right here is the wellhead protection area for the uh, Samerville Municipal Water Precinct, I think it's the official name. It's yep. the town water system for the town of Wakefield. Uh, this parcel is not within the wellhead protection area, so the application is correct. It's not in, but it's really close. In fact, this parcel, especially right here where all this wetland is, this feeds under the road, and I have another hydronic map I can show. I, I've got several maps. I'm not going to bore you all with all the maps, but is I can show you that this has a direct hydron. It's called hydronic. I think that's the right term. Or hydraulic. Hyd hy hydraulic. 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 I think they call it hydric, hydronic so connection with the wellhead protection area. And we've already had an incident in town where farther up Lyford Road, in fact, it was Mr. Chicaroni's uh, farm, Avalon Farm at the time, caused a point, a, uh, a point pollution problem 
that shut down the pub and the restaurants downtown. And I think you got affected by. Did you get affected by that shutdown, David? That was before before you had your restaurant, because there had been point source pollution up on that property. Came down Lyford Road, went right in here and right into the wellhead. The interesting thing about these wells is if you look at this map, there's the circle, the wells are there in Brookfield, by the way. Right. The, 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 well, the municipal wells for Wakefield are in Brookfield, right across the town line, but they're there. And they're also shallow wells. They're only 15 to 25 feet deep. They're not, they're called surface water wells. <clears throat> uh, although they sit on top, this bigger blue area is one of the largest aquifers in the state of pure water. It's underneath Bill Gaber's house, if you want to know where the center of it is. But this, the wellhead protection area sits on top of even a more precious water resource, that aquifer, that's long been recognized by the state and us as a very something to protect. And, and because these wells are surface wells, any point, any contamination on the surface of the surface water, they're really vulnerable to it. And again, they, the town of uh, got shut down. Everybody had to boil the water for a couple days because some horse manure got pushed into the stream is what happened. And, uh, and it caused, uh, I was either E. coli or, uh, I forget what it was. It was salmonella. Huh? E. coli and salmonella. And salmonella both. So it cleared itself up, but all of, all of us property owners, myself included, along Lyford Road, are aware that, that this is a situation, not only is it just locally, but up to the, where the ridge is on Lyford Road, all the way down, we're the headwaters of the Branch River, which feeds into the Salmon Falls River, which feeds into the Piscataqua River, which is the Great Bay. We've had, several times we've had representatives come to the Conservation Commission here in, in and this is just kind of for your edification too, so you know what, your, what your property does. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and it's, 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 good it's, it's good to know uh, uh, that it is that uh, we've had the uh, Great Bay Protection come up and offers grants to do better drainage because we're the top. And if, if something bad goes on up here, it goes right down through the entire water system, right to the Great Bay and out into the ocean. So, um, uh, and we have had this one incident in town where there was point source pollution. And my concern with this, this lot in particular is that this is all, this is really wet all the way through. And you can actually see it on the map. Also on this lot has another problem, which I couldn't find the source information for tonight. There's a little yellow flower. If you go down Lyford Road in the springtime, you look out there in that swampy area, you're going to see this little yellow flower. I think it's either protected or on an endangered list. It's called a bog lily or bog daisy or bog something. Bog daisy. Yeah, bog daisy, something like that. Uh, and there's a lot of them growing in here. Yep. And so any human activity on this property, such as building a house, having a lawn, there's stuff that could negatively impact them. I agree with the comments made by several other people that I think that the, the wetlands specifically on this lot need a little bit more looking at and, 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 and maybe looking at the habitat and some of the other stuff there. We have another group of these lilies. They're up off of Stoneham Road. They're now on a protected, I think it's a 15-acre piece. Do you remember, Richard? It's now owned by the Nature Conservancy. The owner, the landowners up there donated that property, but it's got the same yellow flowers in it. Uh, and there are very few of them left in the state, so it's considered sensitive. So just the, the whole property kind of has that. It's got some dry areas in it, and again, just because it's got issues doesn't mean you shouldn't let people build on it. That's not what I'm saying. But you just have to do it with a lot of knowledge and, and be careful about it. Mr. Camp, who was an abutter here, wanted to come tonight, but he had a medical procedure today and couldn't come. He also shares uh, Mr. Perry's uh, concern about the house being right up against the property line. When you've got this, all this acreage back here, and then you take one of the potential houses and you put it right up. And lastly, just again with my former planning board chairman hat on, I don't think you can, t you can approve this tonight because of the technicality without a driveway permit. Because without a driveway permit on this small lot, you don't have a buildable lot. And even though Brian, who's had a lot more experience than me on this, thinks that the state would give a driveway I think there are issues. The state is uh, 
pretty strict with their um, uh, line of sight uh, requirements for driveways. And, and if you put the driveway ward, it, which is, uh, it's indicated, uh, I think that's really close to the wetlands. So the, as Ms. Marquis already gave you a sheet, the DOT is required to call the DES in. And the DES has already had, in the last year, again, little town history not applying to this parcel, there have been wetland and DOT and DES issues up Lyford Road with another lot that's being developed up there that had a driveway put in that shouldn't have probably been put in. Another story I won't go into tonight. But the DOT and the DES are already very sensitive to Lyford Road because they've been called out here a lot in the last year or so. So uh, uh, now they might, you might get a permit, but that's fine. But I think you guys really can't approve this until you have that driveway permit. This is a state road. Lyford Road is a state road, this section of it. And you need that to make this a buildable lot if you should decide to go forward. So that's just a full technicality for tonight. Um, but uh, I've got more maps that can show, that do show the stream and so some of the more hy hydronic. They're all in these fog doors, by the way, Planning Board. There's a wealth of information there. I'd be happy to go through them with you at some time and show you what you've got in there. It didn't take me long to dig these out, but I knew they were there. So, Anyway, that's my presentation. It's just, you've got to be careful with this one. Because what can happen, again, this is for the town in general, what can happen is you guys could approve this, house could get built, something bad could happen, these people could have a problem, uh, uh, Mr. Chicaroni was fined, I think, fairly heavily for his little uh, escapade with a with a horse manure. And you know, bad things can happen. And then the lawyers get involved, and towns get sued. And every, you know, once lawyers get involved, who knows who might uh, get in the crosshair. So you you need to be careful with this. One other small point, and I can't remember the RSA number, but to answer several people's questions here tonight, if they if the applicants come to us with a three uh, uh, lot subdivision, and then they come back within. I think it's four years. Did you re did you look this up, Tim? Do you know this one? Or no? <coughs> yeah. I think it's four years, and try and resubdivide again. It automatically becomes a major subdivision. No, so they can minutes. they legally this absolutely is a perfectly fine subdivision request here tonight as a three lot subdivision. If they come back within a relatively short period of time, and again I think the term four years, then all bets are off. It immediately becomes a major. And so if, if that were to happen, I know I heard some concerns here tonight, there are protections against for the town in the RSAs to protect against that kind of thing happening. Because that was a trick they used to play in the southern part of the state. And, uh, and there's a lot of case law on that too. So, But you know, you take everybody at their word, there's going to be two big house lots, uh, um, which is a nice use of this property. It's just, you know, the access, oh, the one other thing on the access point, those two containers are on your property, right? They were surrounded by water last spring. Yeah. 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 So, I, I even though you do have the DOT uh, permit, I think that you've got again. So, if you use it as the access point, put a driveway in, you you have some wet issues that have yeah, to be. Yeah, it's lower. on the left hand side more. Okay. And then there is there was another spot with a guy that was dropping those trailers off that stuck in the yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so yeah. and I believe the Dolbears have uh, verified too that, because they're right here, yeah. is that, is that, that's wet. Yeah. So yeah. there's, there's wet, there, there's, the wet issues on the whole parcel and the part, the bigger parcel up behind it too. All right. Thank you, <laughs> Frazier. Thank you. Diane, you had a problem. Oh, yes, thank you. No, it's a question, actually. In the discussion earlier, before Frank gave uh, yeah. us that wonderful presentation, um, excuse me. there was uh, a fair amount of discussion about the, the, the wetland mapping and so forth, and I haven't gotten an up-close look at that, but I'm wondering if all of the mapping of that wetland that has been done by Barney, you said, oh, um, has been transferred onto this uh, display map, or is it <coughs> like an overlay? Um, and if it needed to be enhanced or clarified in some way, perhaps as an overlay, that might be helpful. So that was my only comment. I will note that the drawing uh, states wetlands were flagged by Thomas W. Farney, CWS 211 of Farney Engineering LLC, 
Powder Mill Road, Alton, New Hampshire, in accordance with state and federal mythologies. And he has stamped it with his seal and signed it. Thank you. You're welcome. Excuse me, Diane. What's your, your street address now? 503, sorry. Diane Smith, 503 Wentworth. 503, thank you. Brian. I'm not in a butter. Yeah, I can answer part B to her question. Uh, these wetland flags were surveyed by modern instruments. In other words, Mr. Barney did not draw an overlay. We went out there and located the flags with our theodolites. So they're pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you're asking, answering questions, did the wetland person do the whole lot or just the wetland? To my knowledge, he did the whole lot. You, you don't know for sure. I did not ask him. I made that assumption as I would with so, anyone so, you asked to do their lot. Well, I, I did not you said so we don't challenge him. So well, we, don't, we just don't know if the whole lot was done or just the way it's unlikely. Right? I think he did the whole lot because I showed him where he wanted to build. Which and, was in the blue originally. Well, no, it was further up yeah. the other end of Lightford. And I know him personally, and I think he wanted to keep going until he could find me some place to put a house. Yeah. But where's the brook? Yeah, the brook is... The brook may not be a wetland. It, no. And when, when, when you discuss water sitting around it, containers, sure that doesn't make it a wetland if water temporarily sits there. I know, but where is it? Oh, it should be on a map. Well, I think so it's there in the It's not what's there. Yeah, yeah. That, that comes, comes into play. Because I know there was one that was in the right Any other? Yes. Comments come to me, please. <laughs> Anybody else have public comment? Sorry, I have one question. One question, yes. Excuse uh, me, Rocky, 75 Lakewood Road. Um, that whole parcel of land has everything to do with that brook that runs behind our house, um, uh, starting from, you know, from, I don't know, at least Frank's all the way down from Compton. He gets it, we get it. All right, that water runs constantly all went too long, it never stops, uh, I don't know, it's, it's a brook, it's, uh, is it's that the one under the ground? Uh, no, it mm -hmm. does not, okay, it goes down there, it's constantly open, the mouth of it starts right there where it starts to spread out, all right, that's Actually, where it starts spreading out, right before it camps out, all right, okay, <laughs> it's the, it's the train, we live in Brookfield, that brook, it dumps right there, okay, 90% of that water goes right down, like Frank says, to the reservoir for the Wakefield, San Juanville. Um, yep, got it. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> well, uh, that's important. It is important. We've noted it several times, and I appreciate you reiterating. Uh, are there any other public comments that are have not been discussed or unique to this uh, hearing tonight that people would like to talk about before we move on? All right, we're moving on. Thank you. Thank you very much for your public comments. Can I make a rebuttal, if you will? Yes. I'll keep it very brief. Yes, please. Uh, first, I think we're being very, very sensitive to the lot and its wettish conditions, um, or we'd ask for more lots. This was dry access. It was its legal frontage. It may not be 250 feet, but each lot has their legal minimum. We are promoting or proposing no wetland crossings or impacts at all, just being sensitive to all that environment. We're not saying this is the best lot in Brookfield. It's a D minus lot if you want to grade it in grade school. Um, it's only buildable areas are here and here. If you want to call it a major subdivision, we have no um, objection to that, but you will never see this lot again for a further subdivision based on wetlands rules and environmental factors. Great, thank you. So, there's five of us here to discuss and review public comments. Well, let's not be quiet, let's talk. Well, I, I agree, it's lot five. The proposed site, with all the setbacks, does not leave a lot of room for a dwelling in there with a leaf field. And it does encroach on the abutting lots. The, uh, the neighbors. Not not yeah. So, potential house here. In here. Yeah, right. Yeah. The 
Yes, sir. May I call back Frank Fraser? Yes. Frank, with your uh, knowledge of that draw behind you, was there um, any maps that showed the Wakefield water area crossing the street into one of these lots? Yeah, that's this map. Uh, no, it's this map. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's the no, it's hydronic map. But again, it's not in the wellhead protection area. This is a hydronic soils uh, town of uh, Wakefield. Here's the wellhead down here. This is the way that, and that's the, that's this little lot, blue, which you're calling the blue lot, right? And you can see it goes across Lyford Road, and it's into that wet area. So, what, and that's what I was talking about. There's a direct communi hydronic communication, meaning water can flow very readily right down to the wellheads. Just as you, in your opinion, or in your expertise as a planning okay, chair, okay. Okay. pardon? Would this would this become a regional approval? Uh, Is that enough to make it? Um, uh, the, I would, oh, I was going to say that actually earlier, I'll address everybody, is that uh, planning boards can say that this has a regional impact, that this development has a regional impact. Uh, we did it when they tried to put the big gravel pit in behind where it's now Tom and Dulcie Lamberger's house because of all the trucks and that would have an impact on the roads and everybody else around. You you potentially could say the, the impact on the water precinct makes it a regional uh, uh, impact. I'd say, I'd say it's, and Brian might have more input because you do this more professional than, than I do, but um, I think at the very least you might want to, the board might want to contact the water precinct and say, hey, are you guys interested in this? And let, let them come back to you. Uh, let them know that there's a development that is not in the well protection area, but it is direct hydron, hydric, hydric uh, communication with the wellhead protection area along Lyford Road, and they'll go oh, Lyford Road again. And, uh, 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 but that's directly related to this lot. That's that lot, and that's the lot that, that's the lot that I'm the most that's concerned right. about. Thank you. This was produced by the state, right? Um, Lakes Region Planning Commission. It's Lake Paid Lake. for by the state, I'm sure. Yeah, this is Lakes Region, and uh, yeah. we've got maps. So a couple other maps. I have another map from the, again a master plan map that shows that this whole this whole parcel is part of the green area now, which means it's considered to be sensitive. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you. It, it need be pointed out that is a very approximate map. Yes. Yeah. It is, okay. It is it's a very yeah. Yes. It's yes. not a site specific map. Yeah. It is not. One other thing I wanted to um, discuss was the access on Wentworth Road. It was roughly 120 something feet at one point, and now it's divided again and made worse. It's 260 something feet, but we're only putting in one shared drive. Why would, why would we split it? We split it so we, the shared drive would go right down the, that lot line. So the sh shared drive would. Each lot would own a part of that shared drive. Yep. That's, that's, that's yes. right here. Yes. See the dash line on each yeah. side of it? Yeah. That's the driveway easement, which is 20 feet wide. Is it crossing a wetland area here? You have this driveway? No. The wetland is right up there. Over there. Yeah. So it's 130 feet of water. Yes. Yeah, and, and each of these bigger lots owns at least part of the trust Yes. Yeah. It's what I call a reciprocal easement. Other shared driveways come across one property and then split at the end. Is that is that what they're doing up on uh, Primos? Or is that right down? Uh, uh, I think it meanders back forth for the two lots. Two lots. Yeah. Okay. 
but the, so they're going to both have to have easements, so that both those lots will have to have an easement for these curves. Right, so what my thought is just leave it 150 feet, put a driveway in on one lot, easement it to the other. Well, just, just something we have to look at. We should look at. What you're offering is not impossible. Yeah. I just thought it was cleaner going down the center of that with a lot of line. Anything else? John, you have any thoughts at all? Yeah, I mean, so <clears throat> the 250 feet of frontage that they might have, obviously the access them from that side. If the intent behind that was to have the driveway access on that side, if it doesn't say that, then it really, they still have the 250 feet of frontage on each lot. Yeah, they have it on the road. Right. Yeah. Just, yeah. They're just not using the 250 right. foot area to put the driveway in. They're using a different lot line to do that. So how would they address this? The two houses. Off of Wentworth Road, their, their address would be Wentworth Road. Nine one one request over there. Yep. They would be Wentworth Road. In spite of major fire in the library. Thoughts you have? Any other? This has been a lot presented to us tonight. Yeah. I think we have way too much to uh, consider the bill of approval tonight. What would our action items be? Yeah, there is no driveway permit for this lot. Right. Got a definition of wetlands. Wakefield Water District. Driveway ac access on Wentworth, just to be sure. Um, Wentworth or Lightford? Uh, both. Mm -hmm. Again, a, a lot of questions on lot 18. The overlay of the water district, the protected flowers, the, what was mentioned, the, uh, the size of the dry area, the driveway access is off of Blythe Road, would it be large enough to accommodate yep. 2,000 square foot home? So how, about, how are we going to acquire this information? What will we process? Do we contact the Wheatfield Water District to weigh in on this? I'll take that. Okay. Well, before we get there, let's just work, work through this. Um, as far as the wetland information, do we contact Mr. Barney to provide us with more detailed information, or how do we approach that? We asked for it on the plan. Me, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's definitely not the time of year that we ought to be walking around and try to see if No, no. But you know, it's not the time of the year that we're not paid. Right. Uh, what about, so the driveway items, the Wentworth Road would be, we have to review our zoning yes. and discuss. Lightford Road, we would need a, a permit from the state for that. So that would be up to the, the owner. Someone should contact EPA or whoever it is that's in charge of that flower. Yes. Yes. Yeah. NHB, Heritage Bureau. So do we want 
have a continuation for the next meeting to look at these items. Oh, what? I hate to say it, but I can't promise you DOT will respond within 30 days. Right. And so another continuance at that time? I would say, because we would have to, we, I mean, we obviously would get together here, discuss our findings, and if we have outstanding issues then, or items that need to be addressed, we would have to continue, wouldn't we? Okay. So you're going to handle the Wakefield Water yes. Council? Yep. I and the owners are going to handle the Yellow Flower? Okay. That's through Net New Hampshire Heritage Bureau. And the rest, I think, is you guys. What about uh, Mr. Barney and the wetland, uh, wetland specific map for this site? I mean, we have an overlay here. Does he have one? He must have generated something for you to overlay. His, his generation was flags on the ground. Okay. So and you print out and survey them. Gotcha. Understood. Yeah. So do we have the complete yeah, his notes. wetland uh, yeah. overlay on, on this plan? It is on it's, there. It, it is on that plan. It is on the plan. Uh, someone on the public stated there was a river missing. Right. Apparently that was not a wetland in his view or when he was there. So I, I can't answer for him. Yeah. 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 Okay. Do I hear you guys want to? We'll contact him. You're going to contact him. Okay. Discussion on continuation. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So we will continue this discussion on uh, uh, continue this public hearing on the Samoa sub subdivision for our next scheduled meeting, which is April 11th at 7 p.m. Thank you. Flags have gone up. <laughs> you know, would, would you please put on the agenda when Mr. Varney's going to attend? You will not get new notices. You got your notice. You just heard tonight that it's going to be at their next meeting. They do have to post uh, post it like any other public meeting three days in advance. But because it's continued, you don't have to pay more money, and, and uh, you don't have to go through the whole process they had to go through to get here tonight. So as long as it keeps getting continued, uh, uh, you don't have to. You won't the butters. You won't see anything else in the mail. But you kind of got the notice tonight to come back. Next time, if you want to. Okay. I don't want anything. Susan Marquis, 35 Lakeview Road. Uh, all the questions that you have about um, anything that Mr. Barney did or whatever, you go away to the Department of Environmental Services. Um, Mr. Sweat, you know that they're going to come as soon as they try to pull a uh, driveway permit uh, off Whiteford State Road. Uh, I don't know how they got past it the first time, but that's irrelevant, you know. They it's going the first time. Yeah, no, it hasn't been for yeah. Well, whatever it's, you know what I mean. We have to do a sure. process. Sure. Yep. We're gonna roll on it. Yep. We got it. Thank okay. you. Good. Okay. 
All right. We're moving on to new business. You amended zone. What? Everybody's going to leave? <laughs> Subdivision, uh, two acre setback. So that's a new item. And then I replaced our personal wireless service facilities with the new 12K uh, zoning that was approved. It is not uploaded yet. So, as part of our process of accepting, uh, of, of receiving the new zoning, we have to sign uh, this document, and then we have to have it notarized by the town clerk, and then it can be posted. Then it will be official. Yes, sir. If we have a problem with that, with the number two, we yeah. have to deal with the. Approved driveway? No, approved no, driveway. Yes, we see. If we don't sign it, can we still modify that before we sign we it? We would have to have, as Diane pointed out, we'd have to have another town meeting to vote. Well, I, I would suggest that we uh, call Laura and run this by it because that's a typo. We never talked about removing the approved, and, it, and it's in our definition. So I'm, I'm just calling it a typo, and I'd suggest that we ask Laura what do we do if there was a typo. In one of the warrant articles, and proceed right away with what she says we have to do to fix it. We can't let this run a year. Okay. But you really can't. It's, it's no, I, I wouldn't think something like that would be applied. It's it's gonna it's gonna cost a lot of money. Right? Yep. So you, you don't know when she comes back from. Uh, I don't. I think she's busy. Uh, she's taking off uh, right after. Meetings. So we're saying that we are not going to sign this tonight. Yes. So this is not uh, active. Right. Okay. Yeah, reasons for we found a typo. This justification, isn't it? Yes. Well, moving on then. Old business. Uh, I have conditional use of that permit. We discussed meeting with Laura. Uh, since I will be contacting her about this, I will contact her about that. We talked about um, meeting with her with the selectmen as a co-meeting to discuss that process. Yes. 
And then gravel and pit inspections 2021, we had a discussion last month about, uh, about that, about the process. I remember where we left off there. noted that he could not locate the reclamation plans and we were wondering whether or not they needed to be current and we discussed the, the planning board authority over gravel pits and we wanted to get some clarity on that from Laura also yes there was like can you ask them to do a new one but you just need to know what the what, what the process is. What they need to entail. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Contents. So nothing else on that. No. Uh, member comments. John, any comments? I got done. Rick. Uh, I just want to say good job on the uh, first portion of the public hearing. A lot of questions were raised and there's still a lot of work to do before anything happens with this land. Yep. Terry, any comments? I have none other than, you know, that was, really was great. I mean, good. when you have an issue like this, half the, or at least half the butter show up, I mean, that's a good sign. Yes. Absolutely. Agreed. Gary, you have any comments? Yeah, I just was interested. I thought there was going to be more discussions of, of yay or nay about it. And there wasn't. So, I mean, the issue was really about the location of, you know, the dwelling and this. I, I was thinking that there was going to be more issue just about the breakdown of it. So. Yes, I, yeah, I think there's a there's a lot of technical questions that we still have pertaining to that, I would say, that will come out, I'm sure, next month, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, I would like to echo Rick's comments about, uh, about the public hearing. I thought it was great to have very thoughtful uh, just comments and discussion, and uh, I, I'm, I'm pleased to have that as Said that many people come out. That's great. Didn't even get around. With that? Didn't even get around. No, nope, no remedy. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. All right. With that, uh, the next meeting is scheduled for April 11th, 2022, at 7 o'clock. Uh, we adjourn. It's 8:12. Yeah. 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 Yeah.